Hey, what is going on, guys? It is the SMT. Thanks for tuning in to watch this edition of the SMT YouTube channel. We have the T-Mobile Quarter 1 2020 earnings report summary for you all. Uh, this is the first as a merged company officially with Sprint. The, um, the earnings was completed uh, at, I believe, 4.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the call did last for, um, I don't know, I'd say at least an hour, so maybe a little bit over an hour. Tons of questions, lots of information about the quarter, huge, you know, dynamic, you know, implications from all types of stuff that have been going on over the last several months. Let's go ahead and get started with all of that. First, please do check out the links in the description box. The SMT Patreon page link is there. We also have the second channel at Sneed Tech. And then we have the, uh, or excuse me, the second channel, Sneed Mobile Tech live streams. Also the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech and the Megadon.net invite code. Never need another social media platform ever again. The social media platform of the future. No algorithms, no ads, and no tracking. Megadon.net. So the details that we got in the earnings report that were hosted by T-Mobile, they included the normal you know, characters. We had Mike Sievert, who's the CEO. We had Braxton Carter, who's the financial guy, you know, the business side of things. And then Neville, who also spoke about the network. So uh, the last quarter earnings included John Leisure, but we know that he has officially walked away from his position. He did not renew his contract. So he completed his run as the CEO on April 1st. So he's been out. He also vacated his board position chair. And uh, now it was pretty much all run by Mike Sievert. So he ran the show and, uh, you know, he did, a, he did a pretty good job, I guess. I mean, all that was great. Uh, Mike Sievert, uh, the CEO, opened with a very long introduction about the merger. He talked about the network integration process and how it was long and grueling and difficult, uh, the transition and things of that nature. He spoke quite a bit about the pandemic. He emphasized value and better network performance with no compromise. So it wasn't value or a better network. He made sure to indicate that you get both with T-Mobile. He acknowledged that the better value would be a big piece of what they do post-pandemic as the financial situation is difficult for many people. Uh, let's get to some numbers. So postpaid, they had 452,000 net additions. Uh, they had 777,000 postpaid phone ads. They had minus 128,000 in the prepaid. So they had losses there. Overall, they had 60, uh, 650,000 branded net additions. That means that the quarter streak of you know consecutive quarters of having one plus million customers added that has been officially broken it has come to its end and now that is done uh, it was a great run for t-mobile finally comes to an end and i bet it probably would have got to a one million if it wasn't for the pandemic i'll get more to that in a second regardless you know, adding 650,000 branded net ads, still nothing to sneeze at, still more than all of the other carriers, including big cable uh, combined. So they did a great job there. 8.7 billion in revenue. That's their best ever for a quarter one. 3.52 prepaid churn rate was really low. I believe the lowest Q1 ever. Uh, the ARPU came in at 45.80 compared to AT&T's 56. You could see a difference there. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of those metrics. Now let's get to some of the other things that were disclosed in what they were highlighting from Braxton Carter and Neville with the network. So what we saw was, um, you know, the new T-Mobile network, it's now disclosed that the spectrum holdings exceed 300 megahertz of spectrum, I believe 319. Uh, they're ready to leapfrog AT&T and T-Mobile or AT&T and Verizon and pass them. Uh, they mentioned the Philly and network uh, integrations there as well as New York City and Manhattan with the you know full layer cake uh, developed in those regions uh, they also spoke about more locations soon to come and that's good to see uh, revenues look good they were high they spoke about some metric called ARPA account revenue you know on a per account basis that was interesting I'd never heard that metric before uh, they spoke about the merger costs and how that was going to affect cash flow merger costs will be hurting the network build in some ways Retail stores are also going to be negatively impacted. The pandemic also hurts them with over a billion dollars in cost and cut effects. Could be an issue for the rest of the year and beyond, uh, is what they spoke about. Uh, Neville also mentioned the pandemic being a challenge for network integration as well, and the build-out of 2.5. 
Uh, he spoke about, you know, it needing time and that kind of being a setback in a way. You know, it could take months and years to complete this build. It's ongoing. It needs time. It's not easy, but they are going to be, you know, working hard at this. Uh, you know, um, the 600 megahertz lending that they had from Dish and other companies, they were hoping that it was going to continue in the future. So it looks like we don't have any concrete, uh, you know, time frames and, and, and whatever else. But it looks like they want to continue operating those license holdings to help them with the network as they kind of integrate things between Sprint and T-Mobile. Uh, he kind of poo-pooed DSS some more, uh, and that actually makes sense now at this point because you have the merger, tons of 2.5 that is going to be specifically allocated for 5G. So a DSS, really not a priority for them at this point. Uh, Neville also talked about his future. He's not going anywhere. He's there for the long term. They keep extending him, so he plans on staying as long as they'll have him. Uh, T-Mobile has also disclosed that they fuse their sales business between the two companies now. So they're now a single operative company. So day one for corporate is done. Now it's really just for the consumer side, which we are expecting at some point in August. Uh, I think August 2nd was the date. Uh, network and systems and customers and things like that. Uh, so in, in kind of like a synthesis of what we see, everything looked good for the company, you know, considering all things with the pandemic and, and all those types of financial issues with the economy. Uh, it looks like they were on track to have a massive quarter again. Uh, January and February looked amazing, and then the pandemic happened. So the 1 million or more customer ads, you know, getting cut, I mean, can't, I mean, <laughs> there's no surprise that they didn't get to that point. I mean, and then throw into the fact that in the future it might not happen again because Sprint's gone. Uh, you know, there's just no room for that organic growth at this point any further. Uh, so maybe this is the last time that we ever see any type of wireless company have those types of additions that uh, those additions have been uh, truly unprecedented. Uh, anyways, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Drop me a line in the comment section, the voice of the people, the SMT nation, comment on anything I covered in the video today, any other earnings report uh, items. Um, if you appreciated and enjoyed this video, please do like this video and share it. Helps the channel out quite a bit. And uh, maybe it's your first time here. Welcome to you. Consider subscribing and activating that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And if you're not ready to leave the channel and you want to check out some other videos, I've handpicked some for you to check out. They're all over the place. So thank you guys again for watching. I'm the SMT, and we will see you guys on the next video. Peace.